everyone, welcome back in this video. We are going to create W-E-B Du Bois inward spiral gram straight from the copy of the book here, this visualization, this inward spiral. And uh, let's hop in. We are going to use Tableau's Superstore data to replicate this visualization, but really we're going to define a template for it in this video. And to do this, we, you know, we're going to recreate this. You'll see we have, by the way, uh, dual axis on columns here. That's really just for the labels so that we can have a beginning and end labels. If you wanted to work it out and figure out how to do it using just a single measure on rows and columns, that's fine by me. But this is how we're going to do it. And to make this visualization, we have to customize our data source. So I'm just going to right click on my data set and edit my data source to show you what I've done to prepare my data here. So just right click, edit data source, and we'll load it up. Oh, we got a little broken section here. That's perfect. We'll go and fix it. So I'm just going to remove this placeholder that we have here. And right now we're just connected to orders. I've got this second connection, placeholder sheet three. So I'm going to edit this connection just into my downloads folder here. And um, let's go find sheet three. Find that in downloads. There it is. And I'll open that up. So we have that connection now established, just a CSV. This is a secondary data source. This sheet three is just a single column. I'm gonna join it together and show you. We'll bring it in. I have to make a join to start here. We're gonna do create a relationship. We're just gonna do one on a calculation relationship on both sides. One equals one. This is gonna do a many to many join across the entire data set. And you'll see I just have a column in my data set now that goes from zero all the way. Well, this one's pretty large, but it's really to densify my data, to build a smooth looking circular inward spiral and I'm just going zero to 200. You could specify whatever value you want from your CSV. I just find 200 makes it nice and smooth. Anyway, we've got our data created. And I'm just gonna create a new sheet. Again, let's take a look at what we're gonna recreate. But I've got that new sheet that's already created and Tableau's loading it up. We're just gonna have a starting point and we're gonna create three parameters to define three major components. The outer start is how wide, how tall, what is our starting radius going to be? And this is going to vary based on the measures or dimensions that you select. So the number of dimensions, in this case I have four, I don't need to go too far out. But if I wanted to, I could change this outer start and what you'll see is the circle starts out wider and it kind of loops in. It doesn't really work when I go to 100, but if I shrink it down to 50, you'll see just some subtle changes. Now 30, see that it changes back to 20 and we have that nice circular look. The number in circle here, another parameter, is just the number of points that will be represented in a single circle all the way around in one circle. In this case I have it set to 120. If I change this to 100 you'll see it's a tighter spin, we get more spirals. If I changed it to 50 we would get even more and in fact we go past our limit for our outer start. So we would sort of just need to change our outer start a little bit. And what we end up having to do is play around with these parameters. But I'm just gonna set outer start back to 20. I'm gonna set my circle back to 120. And then the last parameter we're gonna create is a third parameter called padding. And this is gonna specify our padding in between our loops. So two is just two units. But if I change it to four, we'll double that. And if I go too far with my padding, say I go to 10, I'm gonna have that looping effect that happens over, which is kind of a cool idea for a visualization to over pad your visual and uh, sort of have some loops in your circles. Just, you know, if I really wanted to play around with it, I could get some real funky looking visuals that are encoded properly, but uh, just are a little you know, funky to look at here. So I'm just gonna set this back, 120, padding to two, and my outer start to 20. And this is how we'll recreate that visualization. So three parameters we'll start by creating. So our first step is we're gonna create a new parameter. 
this is going to start with our start point parameter so we're just going to call this start point I'll do a little underscore to help me remember and let's choose integer and I'm going to set my default here to 100 I know I'm not going to need it to be that big to start but I'll hit OK I'm going to right click and show that parameter I'm going to create another parameter create parameter we'll just call this padding again I'm going to choose integer padding with an underscore after it again I have already created a couple of these I'm going to set my padding to 2 here and then my third parameter I'm going to create a parameter and this one is going to uh, be the number of points in my circle which I'll just call circle with an underscore again because I already have created this one and I'm going to set my value here to 100 so 100 if I've got 200 points in my densification will give me two full loops so I'll hit circle and I'll show that parameter now from here we need to build four calculations we need to build the height how we're gonna the height really to our calculation that'll create that spiral the radius that distance and then uh, the measure that we're gonna calculate it with so let's calculate really the height of our circle that will do the spiral so we can just call this SPRL height HT and I'll do an underscore you'll see I have this measure already created but the way we'll do this is we'll find our start point then we will say start point minus index and this index will be based on whatever dimension we utilize and we will uh, wrap these both in parentheses so it's start point minus this uh, index value and then we're going to subtract in parentheses size which is going to count the number of dimensions in this case we're using region there'll be four it'll count those four and we're going to say size plus padding let's do one more parenthesis around size so size plus padding times the min of a value the value is that column from 0 to whatever in my case 200 divided by my circle parameter so circle is specified at 200 for me here and then one more parenthesis to wrap this up but this calculation will give us the height or our radius that we're going to sort of use to calculate the overall portion of each spiral I'll hit OK here so spiral height is now created now we need to calculate our measure so I'm just going to say SPRL for spiral measure and then underscore because I have created a similar version of this in the past but now we're just going to say min of the value divided by an LOD of the max value this is going to create our value and turn it essentially into a percentage between 0 and 1 is the all the values that will return and we can say less than or equal to and on the right side of this less than or equal to is going to be our measure and we're we're going to use sum of sales so I'm just going to say sum of sales and I'm going to divide this by the window max of the sum of sales so my max dimension my max region in my data set will be this last value this will standardize all my sales values between 0 and 1 and our right left side is also between 0 and 1 so this measure is standardized a standardized comparison we've got now our height and our measure the last parts are the fun parts we need to calculate the y and the x axis so I'm going to create a calculated field SPRL bar y and for our y we're just going to say quite simply our spiral height times cosine of 2 times pi times the min of our value divided by this uh, again max value this is again, standardizing our values inside this calculation and I've got one more parentheses to add in there so we have basically our radians and then our height to calculate the radius of the circle and draw the outer line for the Y you can hit OK let's take spiral Y now and we can click and drag this out on our view and that should go on our rows calculation and right now it's uh, it's a bar let's not worry about that now for our X calculation just SPRL X bar we'll just say spiral height times sine of 2 times pi 
times our, um, let's see here, the, oh, once again, we are going to use this min calculation. Should have probably made a calculation for it, but this is just going to be the min value divided by uh, that LOD, the max value. Once again, standardizing our view. I've used it three times now. I should have just created a calculation for it. And that would be normally be it. This would create our circle. But what we want to do is create, add one more calculation here, which is just going to validate which spirals end where. And it's going to be based on that measure. So we can just say times. Again, don't note that I have this times here, but we're just going to say if our measure, spiral measure, then one, end. And this is going to act like a, a filter. It's going to choose just the valid values for our spiral in our calculation. Now I can hit OK, bring spiral X out on our view. Let's go ahead and find region. We'll take region, just add it out on our view on color. We've got a bunch of overlapping dots. Let's edit our table calculations. We're just going to, on spiral height, select region, change our nested measure as well, selecting region. Let's close that out. We'll do the same thing on this calculation. Select region, and we should have more dots than that. So let's see where we've messed this up. Oh, of course, we don't have value on our view. We absolutely need value out on our view. So we'll bring value, make it a dimension. There's our spiral that we were looking for. And in fact, we'll change our mark type to a line. Let's put, ooh, that looks nice. Nice and fancy looking visualization. Add it out on path. And now we have our spiral. Um, let's show padding. It's not a parameter that I have showing right now. So right click, show padding. So our padding is two, our start point is 100. Let's bring that down to 20. And you'll see we now have that spiral starting to happen. If I go to 120, or maybe I'll just change this to 50, we can get more spirals going on in our data. We just push our start point out to like 30 here. But there it is. That is our spirogram coming together for this visualization. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this and how it's starting to turn out. Um, you know, we probably want to standardize our axes here. I'm just going to edit my axis and I'm just going to set it to fixed for the time being. Let's just go negative 25 to 25 just so that we can see the actual circle that we're anticipating. Same here on spiral Y. Everything needs to be standardized. So I'm going to go um, negative 25. Oh, sorry, I have 30 in there. Whoops, let's just do 25 because we're there. 25 and 25. We're going to have a little overlap, but let's change our start point to 25 as well. So there it is. There's our uh, spiral. It's happening pretty nice. Maybe I'll just change the circle to like 70 now. Um, but our visualization is pretty much coming together. We could sort our bars by right clicking on region and sorting our regions. So we can say select field. Now let's change this value to um, sales. And we can say sum. And you'll notice now we have a sort. Maybe we want to have it descending. So there we go. And we are pretty much all the way through this visualization. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I want to add. Oh yeah, the labels. Um, so we want labels on our visualization. We're just going to right click on spiral X, click, drag, and duplicate. We can dual axis our visualization. Let's synchronize these two. On the X, on the, on the left, we can place region on label. There it is. Let's just click on label and change it to line ends and just put it at the start. And on the other visualization, on the underlying visual, we can go find sales, click and drag sales on the label. Whew, that's a lot of labels. Let's go line ends and we'll say end of line. And that's it. That's the visual from here. We just need to format, remove our headers. Not too difficult. And then the last part, always formatting, removing our row dividers, removing our column dividers, removing our axis labels, uh, removing our grid lines, zero lines, 
access rulers and access ticks. Lots of lines to get rid of always at the end. But that's it. That is the challenge that we have to create here. And I'm just, uh, you know, I'm digging into this and I'm wondering why my padding is so large here. Um, did I choose the wrong padding? Let's just take one last look and do a little bit of debug here. So our height, it would be based in there. So spiral height, let's edit. Padding, padding, size is good. Um, let me just check. Subtract size plus the padding. Yeah, so this is right. Um, we could just tone down our padding here maybe. Set this to one. And, uh, you know, maybe make our circle like 30 here. And like I said, start point, we could pop up further, but we'd have to just remove that axis to get it going. But anyway, that's this visualization. That's the spiral gram. One last, you know, adjustment of the formatting here. Maybe make these bars a little bit larger. But if we take a look, sure enough, I've just got a different starting point, a different outer start, different padding set up for the two visualizations that we see on the, the left here, sheet six versus the final example. Anyway, that is the Du Bois uh, inward spirogram. And hopefully you enjoy this video. If you did, go ahead. If you learned anything, any tricks, be sure to like it. And we'll catch you in the next one. Anyway, uh, take care. Yeah.